This is Signature Gold. Stop TV. Stand by for transmission. This is Smithy.tv. I've eaten lots of food, I've had lots to drink, and then I went and took a piss. Then I turned on this podcast that is called Cast This! Ding, 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 ding. Hello and welcome to Cast This. I'm James Scott. And I'm Ryan Goldhar. We have a special guest. His uh, name is... Jonathan Keltz. Hello! Yeah, you might know Mr. Jonathan Keltz from such shows as Entourage and... A couple other things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, uh, James. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, had, I had it all planned, and then I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Degrassi, the next yeah, generation. Uh, uh, you had a nice run on Degrassi years ago, right? You, yeah, you, yeah. That was one of my one of my. I can't hear you, about. Jonathan. You can't hear me. No, no, no. we don't That's, hear him. Oh, we don't hear him. Oh, you okay. can. Well, well, we do by <laughs> being in front of him, <laughs> but not through the headphones. You should, you should, well, you should hear me vaguely through your microphone. It should be it ve- yes, very yes. vaguely. And President's and choice, memories of Jonathan Keltz. <laughs> Audio sauce. I, li- I like the peanutty <laughs> taste to it. I like it too. It's, it's like he tang. spent some time in Thailand. It has some yeah. nice tang to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Entourage, Degrassi, The Next Generation. You've got a new movie out called Prom, if I I'm do. not mistaken. I do a Disney flick in theaters now. Right now. Uh, Ryan and, 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 and I checked the numbers. Weekend, right? Ryan and I checked the numbers. Uh, you made uh, four million or something. Four point seven. Four point seven, just under five. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's half Thanks. your budget. Yeah. So, yeah we, we had more than that. We had an eight million dollar budget, which was shocking. Uh, the amount that we stretched it into, you know, and made it great. But uh, yeah, we came in fifth place in the weekend. You know, uh, Fast and the Furious took about. 86 million. <laughs> yeah. So combined, we took over 90. You know. Wow. Yeah. So whatever was left, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, you guys spread, you spread we, that we, with some we other spread movies. That around. And you, you got the guy. Yeah. What is Prom about? Uh, prom is about uh, all the sort of individual stories and journeys to that big seminal night, that uh, last night of high school, the celebration of it. You know, we, we have uh, about 14 kids in the, the cast, and, you know, it's sort of seemingly of the stereotypical, cliched high school kid variety, but we tried to show the issues and the things going on under the surface, making these kids tick, and sort of how prom stirs the pot of uh, all the things going on you in You get the school. geek, the jock, the nerd, everyone's, you know, the cool guy, and everyone's... You yeah. Know. If the movie was made just a little bit later, mm-hmm. would they have licensed the song Friday? For the soundtrack of that movie, <laughs> you know what? I God, I'm. I, that's, <laughs> that's the, the, the this idea. Is a, it's a philosophical me. question. It's, it's, I guess. it's you know, it's actually not even because Rebecca Black was at our premiere. Go, are you serious? <laughs> strolling down the red carpet. Get out of here. Get out of town. <laughs> yeah, that is great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who do you play in the movie? Uh, I play Brandon Roberts, who is uh, uh, the sort of overachieving all-American prepster. Yep. I play uh, one of the love interests to uh, Nova Prescott, which is the the beautiful and talented Amy Teagarden. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the uh, the guy who her and her parents think is uh, her ideal date, prom date, uh, gentleman she will be marrying. Uh, but then, uh, unfortunately, I'm I'm so focused on everything I got going on down the road and the future I'm trying to build for myself. I'm missing what's going on right here, and so I'm a little oblivious to her affections. And, so who gets uh, who scoops her up? Oh, don't well, give that away. People got to go see the movie. Well, I, I think you can tell by the trailer that she falls for the oh. bad boy with the heart <laughs> the of gold. The bad boy. Yeah, the long-haired motorcycle oh. riding uh, dreamer. The, the guy who's forced to participate in prom celebration yes. uh, uh, get, uh, pr- uh, programming in order yes. to get over detention, I guess. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I hope it's slightly more complicated than that. But uh, no, he... You're going to get in trouble, uh, and the only way out of this is... To help in the prom, uh, yes, the uh, the the prom shed. Does, with all his, of our does he have to work at, at the coat shack or something? Or no, he doesn't. He no. has to help rebuild all of the prom decorations. They all burn down in a fiery blaze. And oh. uh, this is, of course, three weeks before prom, and all of our prom committee is tapped out. We're busy doing other things since we put so much time into prom. I, of course, have my AP test coming up, and that takes priority. But uh, yeah, so then uh, since he's been nagging and causing problems with the principal. His entire four years of the school, and he sort of shows up, makes some witty remarks to him as the shed is smoldering uh, on the field. The Most principal. importantly, it's just it's Disney. Yeah, exactly. That's but no, to we, me, we, that 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 says it all. Really. We tried to we we tried to sort of have a, a sort of more grounded, you know, authentic feel to these kids. Not that High School Musical, you know. No, absolutely, and I'm not talking. But there's no but nudity. There's no nudity. There's no there's no champagne. There's at the no prom. drugs. There's there's that Disney 
dream, you know, glossed over the fantasy of that night, you know. So this is more no the communists. younger girls' fantasy. Disney of the night. turned in some of his animators uh, as yeah. communists. Yeah. So they no, but don't I, do I, that. No I, communists. I meant more the along the lines of, I mean, just just as a uh, a vehicle, and not just not just for getting to see this movie, but for yourself to be yes. able to participate in a Disney film. Uh, you know, lends to a number of other things. Now Absolutely. you're, you know, on that ABC roster, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, no, it's and it's, you know, people will be watching that movie. That TV and video, and every possible media. And the, and if my daughter was not yeah. three months yeah. and instead was twelve, she'd be, you know, at that movie too. And oh, she'd be I'd, stoked. Hopefully, she'll but, see it uh, later. Yes, when, on our DVD copy. Yeah. Well, that's we, the thing that we try to do is we try to keep all forms of you know modern day slang, technology, all that stuff out of it. We wanted it is to that be right? as as timeless as possible. So it was about the kids and about these sort of amalgamations of, of kids and people that really have existed for the last 30, 40 years in yeah. high school and hopefully will, you know, for the next. But, uh, yeah, no, we, we, we tried to make it a little bit more grounded and authentic than uh, Disney's had a reputation for in the past. That's great. A movie called Playback, mm-hmm. which is a psychological thriller um, that uh, was a fun little indie we shot. It's got some, it's got some humor and it. it's got some, some creepiness. Just the right combination of the two, I think. Nice. Uh, the, the, the amazing Christian Slater plays a down and dirty cop and it just causing trouble all over town. But nice. it's basically about what happens when evil sort of gets released upon this town and sort of takes over the media and everything that connects us and sort of infiltrates all of us through that. Um, and so that's fun. And then I actually, I was fortunate enough, I got to shoot in Barcelona for a couple of weeks Ooh. with uh, Michael Ironside, Canadian institution. The Canadian that legend. Is, that he is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I play uh, I play his son in a movie called Transgression uh, that's uh, sort of about uh, this very sort of conflicted uh, family. You know, that he's remarried uh, this you know Spanish woman and I'm the angst-ridden son that really doesn't like and trust the, the new wife and uh, we become the victims of home invasion. And that sort of brings to light all the transgressions and secrets and lies that everyone has against each other, and sort of becomes a petri dish in terms of all of that stuff coming nice. to life. Nice. Yeah, you get to shoot overseas for it. That's awesome. Exactly. I got to got to go to some soccer games. Wow. Barcelona is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was a fun city. Yeah. My goodness. Uh, well, how are we doing for time? Should well, we why don't we take a break and uh, and we'll be right back with Jonathan Kelts. Welcome back to. We're Cass- back. We're back. Cass- Here we are. This. Back. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I figured uh, this was actually a good a good opportunity to jump in and say so, Jonathan. Yes. Uh, no, we we personally have known each other for for a number of years. Yes, you you taped my first audition ever. I did. Do what remember, was that? Do you remember? That was, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the project, but it was a pilot uh, for Los Angeles. That was a uh, Mel Gibson produced pilot of some family comedy thing that I, I can't remember the name. of. This is of course. About seven years ago. It, it is. This was at the old location so before before you two be, joined forces. And and became this great big room of studio. And awesomeness. Uh, awesomeness is, 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 is abound here. Yeah. Uh, my question to you is, yeah. so what what led you to this business? What's, uh, what was the driving force for the want, the need, the urge to act? To, the passion. Yeah. Uh, well, uh... I, I'm very fortunate that I knew I wanted to do this at a young age. Um, uh, me and my family were from New York originally, and uh, I was in upstate New York from like 7 to 14, and it was it was around when I was 10 years old that I really decided officially that I wanted to become an actor. And uh, Woodstock, New York is not exactly the boom town of the industry that one might think it is. but uh, That's where uh, <laughs> a lot of retired 60s rock musicians exactly. live. Exactly. Like yeah, Levon Le- 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 Yeah, and, those and people. Dylan's yeah. got a pad there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, so uh, I was in upstate New York and, um, you know, through performance, through a number of different things, I really, you know, uh, grew a, a strong passion for it. And surprisingly enough, we were discussing it earlier, but Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet was one of the other things that sort of made me say, I want to do that. And um, then I was studying and uh, taking classes, doing theater. I was fortunate I got to study. I did a master class with uh, Alan Arkin. Uh, right wow. before moving to Toronto, and uh, so so in New York City. Or? This, no, this was all upstate New York, and so then it he was, just happened to come to Buffalo, and <laughs> it, he was teaching a class in Hudson, New York, which was right by Woodstock. Wow! And uh, yeah, no, it was through a connection of a, a, another student of his that he had had before, who she brought him down, and I'd uh, taken a, a community college course that she had taught, so she sort of had made the introduction and made it happen. That's great. And uh, then it was the move to Toronto that sort of helped, uh, sort of. Uh, spawn and, and kickstart my professional career. And so it took about two years for us to get 
our uh, land and immigrancy here, and so I would have you know work visa and student visa and so on and so forth. In that time, I just took on-camera class after on-camera class, and when I was about 16, I uh, used those references to sign with um, the wonderful Miss Rhonda Cooper, and uh, yeah, that's about seven years ago now. Oh, nice. I, I, it's dumbfounding in some ways. It's like you're waiting and waiting to get like status here in Canada. Yeah. And technically, you could have signed here and worked on anything American. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But uh, what brought you to Canada? Uh, my parents, my my uh, my parents and I uh, moved up to Woodstock, New York, from Manhattan mm -hmm. in an attempted early retirement, which, as these things do, fizzled and, and failed. <laughs> but uh, no, they they've uh, always been involved in in the industry as well. Uh, my dad was the uh, co-founder and president of Scholastic Productions in, in New York, and my mom has been in PR for uh, her whole career. And so uh, then, when we moved to Canada, it was uh, they were very much involved in. Interactive new media. They were doing some documentary stuff and uh, some sort of international documentaries and, and whatnot, uh, and basing that stuff here. And then it was uh, now my dad's very much involved in uh, uh, the Virtual World Story Project, which is uh, the Second Life uh, Entertainment uh, program. And my mom's doing some internet publicity for different authors and such. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm getting a giggle because my wife is calling through. <laughs> <laughs> she is indeed. She is indeed. I'm She's ignoring right this phone call. Oh, no. I won't tell. <laughs> I will. <laughs> now everyone, including her, who will never listen to this. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Jonathan, what was the not, first... It's not anything against you. She just won't. <laughs> What's the, what was the first gig you got? First gig I got, I got two gigs back-to-back. Uh, -back. Uh, the, the first two were uh, an episode of Radio Free Roscoe, mm -hmm. which, uh, of course, was shooting here in Toronto, which was an absolute blast. And uh, I also shot a, a little one-scene role in uh, a, a Heather Graham movie called Cake. Cake. Yeah, we did casting for Cake at yes. the, the link, I remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fun thing about that was I was a little punk 16-year-old kid who got to dance and kiss the lovely Heather Graham. Oh, nice. So Pretty awesome. That was That's still one of the best nights I, of my I life. I have a camera operator who kept her water bottle. No. <laughs> From the audition session, did she, she come? Was, did she come she, in? She, she, like very few times in the Canadian side of casting Amazing. for films, do the stars actually end up coming to the casting session? Yeah. And Heather came in to read against the male leads that would go against her. Right. Friend. And uh, and you know there was a water bottle there, and it was that sad and pathetic that. Uh, I mean, yeah, she's great, but uh, it's, that is it's, a bit. It's, it's a yeah. I I kept. I had to do a, a on location casting for. Uh, once a thief for one of those things, yeah. and I kept John Woo's pen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but see, that's so cool. Like, imagine the dreams and movies and things that have been scribbled with that. Yeah, the the broken English that had been written with that, with that pen. But the uh, but no, uh, Heather Graham's water bottle. That's, uh, that's I I, I was dicey. tempted to keep uh, uh, Carradine's uh, piece of cake from his birthday party on an episode of oh. The Legend of Kung Fu. Nice, but uh, but that uh, would have gone bad. I that, yeah, no, no, it's, it's still in my freezer. It, unless you it with uh, some sort of... It's in the uh, same container as the cupcakes from my wedding. Did it oh, okay. taxidermy. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, okay, so you got those two things. And then what was the first sort of larger... When did you start getting in bigger roles? And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was interesting. Uh, the my, my work started here in Toronto, and I got to, you know, build up some credits and get some experience. But uh, the, the first role where I'd say I really uh, got to sort of stretch myself and, and try and grow was uh, this episode of Cold Case I did, which mm -hmm. uh, was the first thing that I shot in Los Angeles. And uh, I played sort of like 1963 uh, James Bond type. Uh, James, what am I saying? James, James Dean, I'm James, assuming. James Dean type. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I guess I jumped into the future dreams right there. But no, 1963 James Dean type. Uh, that's sort of this uh, rebel without a cause uh, kid. And uh, I got to sort of express some emotions, do some fun stuff. I got to drag race a 1957 Chevy Bel Air. And it was, it was the first time I shot like on a studio lot in nice. L.A. And it was also, you know, I, I, I end up uh, having this sort of emotional mercy killing at the end of it uh, to a dear friend who's uh, been institutionalized. And it was the first time for me to be able to sort of tell people to watch, tune in, and say, this is what I do, and I know what I'm doing. I, I haven't been joking around these years when I've said I'm going to be an actor. Right, that stretch of Degrassi didn't help. It was cold case. It really led to... Uh... It, yeah, well, it was, you know, Degrassi, it was, you know, the, that's it, the show, the thing about the show, you know, there's... As always, thirty-five you know characters in every yeah. episode, so it's you know it's hard to really sort of stand out and make your mark. Uh, on the show, I played Nate, um, the actor at the high school, and uh, I was Dracula in the school play at the same time as a gonorrhea outbreak was. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank thanks to Mr. Mike LaBelle. 
but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ryan, so. it wasn't real gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, Michael, if you're listening, yeah, Mike, yeah. I'm really sorry. I saw Mike in the subway today. Did you? Very did. See? No way. I would have mentioned gonorrhea. If I, <laughs> I wish. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But, uh, yeah. No. I mean, it's uh, it's been a it's been an interesting uh, sort of path over the last number of years. But the, the first role that helped me sort of that that was really a launching pad was you know getting to beyond Degra- uh, beyond Entourage and play. Uh, Ari's assistant, you know, coming back uh, last season, and it started off as just a one scene role where I get fired by Ari, and then they're like, ah, we'll bring you back for the next few. Ah, we'll bring you back for That's the next great. few. And so uh, it just sort of snowballed, and uh, I'm back for the final season and having some fun filming. Love to talk to you a little bit more about that. We yeah. should probably take another break. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Break okay. it up. <laughs> and scene. Nice. That's great. We'll talk start, about Entourage. We'll, ta- well, yeah, we'll talk about Entourage, and then we'll... Uh... And then do you live down in Los Angeles right now? I do. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk to you about what, what it's like to live in Los Angeles. You got it, yeah. And what are you doing in Toronto? Yeah. Okay. Talk about that, and talk about, like, actors and stuff like that, living in Toronto and going to L.A. and, like, that whole thing, if you can. Are you, your oh, parents are still here. Yeah, right? my parents are still here with them. Yeah. Like, are you back here to visit your parents? No, I, I'm shooting. back here shooting. Oh, what oh, was just talking. Let's record. Okay. No, here we go. Right, stand by. Ready? In five, four, three... Two, one, go ahead. We're back. We are back. Here we are. Cast this. Uh, so, how, like, did you just, were you just called to do an audition uh, for Entourage? Did your did your agent, did your representation? Yeah, send well, you? I, uh, I was uh, between agents at the time, so uh, my manager uh, got me the audition, and there's uh, an episode at the towards the end of season six where there's, uh, like, three, four guys that get fired back to back to back uh, mm-hmm. by Ari, and so uh, everyone came in and read for all of them. So I came in and read for all the guys, and, you know, I had a number of different characters and idiosyncrasies brought in for each one. I even brought a little mini, like, headset for the desk and uh, to joke around, and then... Yeah, it was uh, fortunate that uh, I just made the tape, the one tape, you know, then, and they cast me off the tape for. Was that right? It wasn't. You didn't have to go back for repeated auditions. Yeah, because it was supposed to be just the one scene role, right? And did you shoot that tape in L.A. while you were down there? I shot that in L.A. with the with the casting office there, and then I actually flew back because I was in a class in Toronto that started up right afterwards. Found out that I was I booked it, had to fly back for the day of work, and then fly back to Toronto. It was uh, (laughs) it was fun. But then it was uh, right before the, the seventh season began filming that I got the call saying that they wanted to bring me back for multiple episodes. So I just had that one audition that ended up leading to you know uh, quite a number of episodes. How much uh, sticking to the script or deviation from the script is there when you're dealing with Jeremy with Piven? With somebody like Jeremy Piven. Yeah. yeah, well, the thing is, you know, uh, there there's... It, it, it depends, you know. First of all... The writers on the show write it unbelievably well, and yeah. they they know how to write Ari Gold. So he's get he's got a lot of fun stuff. But there's times that he'll sub in a joke, like maybe change up the celebrity that you know we're teasing about, yeah. or change things around a bit, or he'll just sort of go off on a tangent, you know, in terms of having a freebie take or whatever. Or yeah. sometimes it'll even be you know things change rather the last minute. They'll be like, okay, so yeah, so we need you to work this in now, work this in, go. And uh, he's just sort of got to make it all happen and, and work. But uh, it's, it's, it's awesome getting to work to him. I don't get a chance to really improvise too much or change things around, you know, with the dialogue that I'm given because a lot of it's much more functional in terms of letting him know things that are going on, mm-hmm. who's on the phone, you know, what's happening around the office. <laughs> <laughs> And you do a great job. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, so, uh, it's a you. great show. Try, uh, try not to get fired. It's and a, this is the last season, season, apparently. This is the final season. Uh, it's going to start airing July 24th, I believe. Uh, it's only going to be an eight-episode eight, eight episode season. you got to make sure uh, you all come out and, and watch it, because uh, they're sort of trying to put together an entourage movie as well. Entourage so movie. We need the fans to uh, band behind us on this one. Yep. Yep. It's, and sometimes uh, the, uh, the fanfare really does get, you know, cause... It to happen. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, Otherwise, you wouldn't have movies like Serenity, and you wouldn't have yeah. Arrested Development, you know, constantly trying and trying and trying, trying to get to that point where I think now they might even be 
closing in on making Or you wouldn't have cast this, the podcast. That's right, right. Because, <laughs> because our fans have been asking for this, and finally James and, and I Why don't you in. get Jonathan Kelts? Why don't you get him to come in? Well, so I, we did. Crazily enough, I've been the biggest advocate of cast this, you know, over all it's these true, years. It's true, you did ask us to bring you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so you're back, you're back here in Toronto, you're shooting You're shooting something up here. What I are am. you doing? What I'm, are you doing? I'm, I'm working on a, a, a new show that uh, is currently temporarily called Combat Hospital. Yes, I, uh, I believe they really do need to change the name of that. The, it's, well, this well, do you find it merely functional? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've they've, they've got uh, they've gone through two or three names already so far. So I think they're Hospital of Combat. Out. Yeah, no, Hot and Zone was it, one. Hot but zone. anyway, the yeah. uh, the the <laughs> basis of the show. With hot pants. It was. Uh, oh, that's a different show. It was a different show. <laughs> that's, that's a different why show. they went back to the uh, yeah, uh, combat yeah, hospital. Yeah. Absolutely. No one believed nurses in hot pants. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a seven, it's like a it's like a lips? what's that what's that guy's uh, name? Who did the Love Boat and nine hundred two one zero? Oh, uh, Aaron Spelling. Yes. Aaron Spelling. That would have been Aaron Spelling show. Yes. Yes. Hospital. Hot Pants Hospital. Hot, hot Pants Hospital. <laughs> ABC nineteen seventy six to seventy nine. Mm-hmm. Just before but, the Love uh, Boat. That's right. Okay. Anyway, enough. <laughs> enough <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Ricardo Montalban. Yes. <laughs> Ah, it's oh, playing, boss. It's So, um, um, who are you playing on this show? Well, the the show uh, takes place in a military hospital in Afghanistan, okay. and it's sort of about the uh, the American, the Canadian, the the British, you know, and, and Australian forces, and everybody that's sort of coming through and passing through there. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I play this kid named uh, Henry Flax. That's uh, you know, he was orphaned as a small child in a car accident with his parents, and uh, he sort of had. An interesting development over the years, uh, whereas he's uh, a 19-year-old kid, he's really only about 11 or 12, uh, and he's the, his unit's good luck charm, and they sort of take care of him, he brings them luck, and he sort of just loves out and, and is caught up in a situation that he doesn't fully understand, but uh, yeah, he, he ends up getting ill, and uh, they take care of him at the hospital, and they didn't even realize that he was there, he was there by chance with his unit uh, after uh, one of the trucks drove over an IED, so... Fortunately, he was in the right place at the right time, but it's sort of about his journey and uh, his um, love of, you know, his fantasy world and comic books and his desperate need to help him be a superhero. Did you audition for this here, or did you audition in Los Angeles? For um, well, fortunately, I actually did not audition for this. Oh, Even better! Uh, Look at that. It does happen, folks. It does. It yeah. does indeed happen. No, uh, we knew I was going to be in Toronto, and so uh, we approached them, and they knew that I was going to be around. So they said, "Yeah, we'd love to have you come in and play the kid." That's great. That's, that's great. That's how it works. How uh, how many years were you acting up here before you decided to move down to Los Angeles? Um, and well, you, and uh, part B of the question is, did you decide to do that because you have American citizenship as well, or would you have done that anyway? I would have done that anyway. I mean, uh, Los Angeles is the belly of the beast. That's mm-hmm. where the things happen, and that's that's really where the origin of it all is. You know, there. I mean, I, I've auditioned for things that you'd hear down there, and it's much sexier to them to audition down there than to be here. Yeah. And um, I uh, was here for about uh, three and a half, three years, I'd say, uh, acting professionally. Uh, before moving down there, but my move down there was really only intended to be just for pilot season. Uh, but things were going really well, and I moved down with another Canadian actor, uh, Robbie Amell, mm-hmm. and uh, he got his visa approved, and we decided, let's get a place. And so uh, we got our first uh, apartment together, hanging out there. And Did you live at that there. hotel? Did you live no, at we that did not. Or that no, we did one, not. Uh, I think they're trying, to make, they're trying to make a, a, a sort of, uh, not a reality show, but a, a sort of soapy type show based on it I'm, I'm what's the name uh, of that place uh, it's uh, uh, something gardens oh, yeah. um, uh, oh god forest gardens or yeah. something along <laughs> yeah. something is outrageous it's got a pool in, in the so, so they're, yeah. they're yeah. trying to make a Canadian show about Canadians down in LA and that yes helps. yes yes Probably. they are there you go <laughs> we'll be shown on showcase next week <laughs> yes it will yes we only need about a week. It's a bit of a bedroom farce. So. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. In fact, it, it's uh, from the same producers as Trailer Park Boys. Oh, uh, and Hot Pants Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> God, Aaron Spelling. Yeah. Oh, so so you've, you've had a good chance to to represent yourself in Canadian television as well. Yeah. Uh, Regenesis, Heartland, Breakout Kings is yeah. shot here. Yes. Uh, so you were in you were in recently a few months ago to shoot. Breakout I was, and, and just to clarify, Combat Hospital is for ABC in the states, but it's also for Global up here in Canada. It's a co-pro. So, nice. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a little mixture of both. But yeah, I got to play a fun fun character on Breakout Kings. Got to show a slightly different side. I play a escaped convict uh, out killing people. Nice. So that was, that yeah. was the first time. I Did got they to catch you? They, well. It's aired. So oh, it's yeah. aired. <laughs> they, they did catch me. They okay, did end okay. up catching me at the end. Okay. I go back to jail. Yeah. 
But I but I killed some people before. Well, that's I did. good. Well, that's, that's good. But yeah. even better, they don't kill you in return. They they just return you to prison. Exactly. So who knows? I could break out again. That's right. Could break out. It, it could be a recurring character. It, it definitely could. Someone, I need I need another shotgun in my hands. You know. Could be a prisoner type, uh, not prisoner, uh, fugitive type series. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Where I'm, I'm the big guy on the run. Yeah. We are going to have to remove your hand, however. So That's in order for it to work, the one-armed really, man. You are the one-armed man. Yeah. 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 Oh, all right. Well, that... Okay. Uh, you know we can do it digitally now. It's okay. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm, you know, I'm kind of method, so this is going to be awkward. <laughs> Good. So, uh, I know you have to leave. I do. So, uh, thank I want to thank you for coming so much for, uh, today for to be part of Cast This. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's you know it's great to be able to give a little bit back to you guys. You guys have been here uh, throughout all the years, and uh, it's always fun and nice seeing you guys smiling in those those audition rooms. We get to uh, rub our bearded faces together a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. Nice. It is pretty good. You know, I haven't, Particularly I haven't, I haven't seen that close. happen. It's, but, it's, uh, there's some chafing involved, and therefore <laughs> not really appropriate for camera, <laughs> but might happen anyway. Look out for it on YouTube in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll be right back. We're back. We're back. Jonathan Kels. Ah, he was great. That Good was, interview. That was that was really nice. And guys, you were watching the progression of us as near professional interviewers. Yes. Uh, do I? I'm going to return with a joke that didn't work the first time. Okay, let's hear it. I'm not wearing any pants. Hot pants. I'm not wearing any hot pants. That's true. Hot pants hospital. Um, it's not the so, show. He's so. Uh, what is it? Um, Downsview Park. Downsview Park. So it shoots at Downsview Park. Uh, the perfect place, of course, uh, to represent <laughs> Afghanistan. Now, it what there is there an army base up there? Or was there an army base up it, there? It is there. The Department of Defense is right on the corner of uh, the Allen and uh, and Shepherd. So do you think they? I use think any they of have that? absolutely no, no use for that. No. Okay. It's, it's, they, it's it's sets. It's they have studios there. Uh, and they build their sense. Downsview Park, of course, uh, is famous in the news because um, the Pope came a few years ago. Yes, he did. They, they, Pope Fest was he, there. He he, uh, he spoke there. And Sars Fest was also there. Yeah, that's right. The Rolling and, Stones. And they uh, the the portable toilets <laughs> backed up and and flooded the basement of the furniture store. I don't know up there <laughs> with uh, human waste. Yes. And so uh, that's how I always. And it's remember. all handmade wood furniture because they're made by. Uh, by I was going to say Mormons, but I meant. Um, uh, not Amish, but uh, Mennonites. Mennonites. Okay, uh, that's what is that true? Idomo is 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 Mennonite. I know he's furniture. got a large beard. No, but that's that's where the family is. So I mean, I'm assuming he's not a part of it if he's on camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but mm. that the, all the furniture is homemade. So all of that waste going in, destroying. This All hit, that furniture yeah. that was uh, that that was huge news. On the other hand, Pope Fest was uh, a huge success in Toronto and uh, is uh, ready for a comeback anytime. With, with Pope Fest followed by Poop Fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we've had some fun. I've had uh, an interesting uh, couple of weeks. We uh, we did some casting at Casting Central. Yes, we did. Uh, now, in the end, it didn't end up going anywhere, but the... The experience the will experience last a lifetime. Will last, exactly. I mean, for, for a company that has been a part of casting for uh, equally 15 years each... Uh, yeah. Well... Again, more or less. More or less. I mean, casting... 10 to 15 Link, years, yeah. Casting Link was started in 96, so the company exists, but we are a facility. But in the end, I, I got to do actual casting, you know, as a favor... Uh, I tried to save the client some money because he didn't want to go the route of spending a but ton of money on casting. But, but you know, but from just observation alone, they, you know, if we've you been have, doing it anyway. Have some, have any smarts at all? It'd be easy to pick up. Exactly, yeah. and uh, and and so you know, we did we did it was for a suit company, and uh, and we brought in a ton of of different styles of people, and of we did gentlemen. one of gentlemen uh, coming in in suits and you know walking back and forth, sitting up, standing down, you know, and it's like and. Uh, yeah, I, I know that you, you, one of the reasons I think that the casting ended early is because you kept yelling at them, stand down, stand down, and then they'd leave. And then they'd leave. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yes, I, I know yeah. that uh, my, my ability to use words that don't make sense, uh, but you knew what I meant. So, I did, uh, I did. Uh, I'm going to point here. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on, and I looked there, so. Looked there. I, it's, it's the equivalent of doing this. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> Um, we, uh, I should also, uh, say that we have a couple of workshops coming up here. Uh, we have a 
parent and teen audition preparation workshop with the casting director that I think cast Jonathan in his first role. If he's in Radio Free Roscoe, yeah. uh, casting Joy. director Joanne Borum uh, would have casted uh, Jonathan in that role, and she will be um, helming the workshop with uh, Louis Bomander on June the 29th. And no, May the 29th. And May June. the 29th and June the 5th. That's, That's right. what I meant. That's what you meant. And uh, then... And then uh, Shine on Camera starts uh, June 4th, which is... Uh, our Saturdays for uh, up and coming actors up and coming who really actors. want to uh, get a taste of the biz yeah. and see what uh, see if it's for them. Right. Uh, so more information on that is at www.castingcentral.ca and uh, check it out. I would say it's fantastic. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully, with another uh, guest because I think the, this guest stuff is the way to go. Don't it, you? Well, I, it is sort of what we were trying to do anyway, yeah. and we've been promoting other guests all this time, and he still hasn't shown up. The mystery the of mis Sydney J. Fury. Yes. Uh, although uh, we've been doing it, research, we we're going to have the most informative uh, interview. This will be the culmination of his life thus far. Will Eventually, be our interview. When he shows him. up, James and I will have taken in at least you know half of half his, of his, his film of his product, yeah. uh, including such gems as the Ipcris file, which is a gem, the Appaloosa, which is not, not a, a gem. gem. Uh, and then Iron Eagle, which is... Um, a gem in spite of itself? Exactly. There we go. Uh, the 80s brought uh, things about... And I will have to watch Superman 4. I've never seen that. So. Uh, well, you know, some people would say it's not as bad as Superman 3. There we go. There you go. But okay. it does not have Richard Pryor in it. That's why. Oh. <laughs> is he not good? Well, he's great. and he, But he has directed Richard Pryor. Sidney J. Fury? Yes, he has. What movie did he do with Richard uh, Pryor? If you give me a moment, I will imdib it to find you the uh, the proper... <laughs> While I'm looking at stuff, we were also watching on the on on uh, on the computer the other day that or yesterday that that clip of the the four comedians talking about. Uh, <laughs> Can we talk about this? Why not? Okay. Uh, this is something you should watch uh, if you'd like to see what it takes to be a comedian and uh, the, really, the, the thought processes involved and the, the intellectual side, really, of, of putting a joke across uh, and all these different elements that are important and, and, the, and the variables that for different comedians and their styles. Uh, we watched a bit of Talking Funny, which uh, Ricky Gervais, executive, produced. He got himself... Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, and Louis C.K. together, and they were talking about uh, what's funny and how s some things are funny to some people and some things aren't, and you don't intellectualize that. You just laugh because you think it's funny. So there's a bit on there, uh, a song parody of... Um, uh, Louis C.K. says that this song parody of Otis Redding's uh, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay is one of the funniest things he's ever seen. Uh, should I take this any further? Or should I, I just uh, ask people to check that out? I think that they should just check it yeah, out. Yeah, you should really check that out. So, twice he has directed... Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Okay. Lady Sings the Blues. Oh, of course. Now, yeah, with Diana the, Ross, and, the Billy Holiday with, story. Yeah, and, and Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Yep. And also with Billy D. Hit. That's not Richard Pryor, though, right? It's Richard Pryor. Really? Hey, look at that. Mike Wilmer. What year is that? Oh, 19... I've never heard of that movie. Billy D. Williams, Paul Hampton, Gwen Wills. Uh, so he has shot two movies. With, he also did Ladybugs with Rodney Dangerfield. He did Gable and Lombard. We don't need to list all this no, stuff. No, I know, but, but I mean, like I'm saying, like he's had the chance to work di with... He's directed Robert Redford. Yeah. And, of course, our favorite. Well, our Frank favorite Sinatra. is Frank Sinatra. With so the, we're going to talk to him about that. Uh, so... Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your phone is. My phone suddenly my phone. started ringing, and uh, and I think uh, I think that's a good uh, good place to yeah, be. Yeah, Ryan's going to answer his phone, and we're going to say goodbye. We'll uh, see you next time. On have a cast week. this. Cast this.